Um, but the the last thing I wanted to kind of talk about is uh, something that is, I think, like a lo- that a lot of people on the left seem to be paying attention to, uh, which is the demise of uh, the Young Turks, right? And and this isn't me being hyperbolic. This isn't me being. Um, you know, uh, 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 I, I I don't even know what to. I'm not tr- I'm not trying to be a shitster or something, um, and I and I kind of wanted to just talk about this a little bit, and get this off my chest, and and then kind of move on. I I don't I'm not saying that this isn't important, but I but I do think that, uh, and and partly because of the way TYT has been handling it, it's been drawn out quite a bit. Um, and if you're not in the know, if you're if you're not uh, someone that tunes into, you know, the 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 YouTube realm, the YouTube world, the content creator zone or whatever the fuck you want to call it. If you're not somebody that pays attention to these these folks, you know, if you're somebody that just like, hey, I, I watch, you know, I watch Jimmy Dore when he talks about Syria or when he has certain journalists on. Uh, when he covers particular topics, you know, but other than that, I'm not really paying that much attention. I, 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 I want to kind of clear that what's going on and kind of give you my point of view and my perspective on it. Um, so basically what happened is Anna Kasparian, who is one of the, the, the head honchos of, of TYT, she's one of the higher ups and Cenk Uger, uh, uh, they do a members only stream or some shit like that. Uh, and they felt like they could get away with this where, uh, I, Jenk tweeted something really fucking stupid about Israel and Palestine, basically claiming that, oh, it's all dumb because it's, it's all about this sky, this sky father telling me to do this and this other sky father. It was a very like crude and, um, arrogant tweet that basically boiled, uh, the Israel-Palestine conflict, for lack of a better term, into uh, into just like a religious affair, uh, and it's all about religion. And and oh man, you know, if we didn't have religion, wouldn't that be great? Uh, and Aaron Mate tweeted like, "My God, says this is the worst tweet of all time." And so so I guess I guess Jenk got mad. And he was he was commenting on that situation and said, "Oh, Aaron Mate got mad at me." And Anna Kasparian basically lost her shit. Was like, "Oh, fuck Aaron Mate. He he supports Assad and is paid by Assad." And uh, you know, Jenk said, "Oh, he's paid by the Russians," which, again, not true. Not even in the in the slightest is that true. Um, you know, and and Aaron cleared up that it, he worked uh, as a uh, producer and editor for uh, AJ Plus. That was the only time that he worked for a uh, state-sponsored news organization, and and they're Qatari, right? And he and he came out and he was like, "Look, this is disclosure. Like, I have never worked for uh, the the Russian state government or the Syrian state government. I went to Syria to cover the story." Um, and you know, some of the, the lefties kind of gave Aaron a little bit of flack about, he's like, yeah, you know, you covered Syria, but you never talked about any of the other people that covered Syria, like Vanessa Bealey or Eva Bartlett. And, and it's a fair critique, but I felt like it wasn't particularly like, I, I do think that Eva and Vanessa do a, a good job and they're good journalists and they deserve their, their credit because they're, uh, because they're they're good at what they do, right? And when you're good at what you do, you should get credit for that. You should be encouraged to do more. Um, but I don't know if that's really like on the same level as what was what was going on. And you know, so I kind of looked at that and I was like, yeah, I think Aaron should say like, hey, also check out these folks. Um, and hasn't and and I don't think that's like a malicious thing. I think that's more of like. I think he's got a lot on his plate thing, right? Like if if Gray Zone has a a fucking social media person, they should be like, hey, we I, we've done a lot of stuff with uh it, 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 for the Syria coverage, but here's some other folks you should check out as well. That would be fine, um, you know. So I disagreed with with some folks on on coming after him on that front, uh, but you know, I, I don't think they were fully off base. I just think that this is sort of 
it mucks up the argument a little bit. But um, after that, you know, the, the, the major culprit of all this becomes Jimmy Dore because Jimmy Dore quite often will have Aaron Maté on his program um, to talk about various things, Russiagate, Syria, uh, the crisis in the Middle East, what's going on in Venezuela, because Aaron talks to people that are experts in this, uh, in this subject matter. He has, he has been on the ground in a lot of these places, so he knows what's going on. He's an award-winning journalist, and he's an actual real fucking journalist. So, uh, be, so you know, and, and Jimmy has, uh, has a history with TYT as well. He was part of their network and then eventually uh, stepped away when they were kind of veering in a, in a much different direction. And, you know, for me personally, I, I was paying attention to TYT as like, oh, man, this could be a network that I could partner with at some point, you know, and, and get some exposure. And, and I, you know, my buddy Ron Placone's done it, uh, where he was kind of affiliated with TYT. Lee Camp was somewhat affiliated with TYT. Uh, but Jimmy Dore was really the only comedian that was like a, 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 a TYT mem like journalist kind of person. Like he was on staff with with them um and some stuff resurfaced right so so they were talking about jimmy being sexist they were talking about how uh jimmy is is uh, oh he's propping up conservative talking points and this that and the third which nah not really i think he's a progressive that talks about how shitty democrats are and that's a fair critique of you know how shitty democrats are uh, and I, I don't really remember who said what first, but I know there were accusations of Jimmy being sexist, uh, where I guess Anna was wearing a skirt and a, and a thong underneath it. And she bent over whether knowingly or not, it doesn't really matter. But Jimmy made a, a, a joke embarrassing her in, in a, in a staff meeting, um, and has since apologized and said, you know, that was really stupid of me to do. And I never meant to hurt anybody, uh, especially Anna, blah, blah, blah. And he gave this apology, um, and Anna accepted it, and they moved on, but that has since resurfaced as something that, oh, you know what, I'm rescinding my acceptance of the apology kind of thing. Um, but but in, in light of that, may, maybe in light of that, uh, I, don't, I don't know if the uh, Jimmy made fun of Anna in a skirt thing was before or after this event, but, you know, videos started resurfacing of how terrible tyt has really been and i mean when i was in college like the th i would i would turn into some of the news segments that T tyt would do just because i had i had heard that they were covering some of this stuff um you know with with a, a little bit of a lefty bend and i was interested in that and so i never really saw any of this stuff I, or or if it came up on my youtube feed it just was just it's just such fucking bullshit and I never paid attention to it, but they, I guess they had a segment called Spot the Camel Toe or something. Um, just this horrendous fucking sexist, gross segment uh, where it's, uh, they put up a picture of, of, a, of a lady in, in, in some yoga pants and it's, and, and Jenk Uger has to guess who the celebrity is. So, he, you know, he's saying like, oh... You know, the fucking gray yoga pants. So, oh, man, look at those breasts, those rotund, and those birthing hips, very wide birthing hips. Oh, man, but, but, the, but the boobs are, are in this circular fashion of, you know, like, um, like, it's just gross. Fucking gross. Like, that's... And then, you know, so, so those videos have resurfaced, and they're, and they're awful. And, you know, I didn't see anyone from TYT, whether it was Anna or Jenk, apologize for that. Uh, but I do know Jimmy has apologized for what he did to Anna. But this is the one that I think has a little, like, this, this hit a little personal for me. Um, not in the sexism realm, but in a different realm, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I will get to that in a second. There's a video that went up that I've, I've seen a few times, and, and just to make sure like I got the context of this properly. The video is basically about um, a producer that had started working with TYT, and she's a very attractive woman. Um, and uh, she got offered to pose nude in uh, Playboy. 
right? Playboy.com. They're doing like a women's of YouTube thing. This is a number of years ago. And uh, so, yeah, so, this is, so she was she was contacted and, and then she confirmed that it's a legitimate email address. Uh, and she declined it. And Jenk goes, well, how much? What were they offering you? And, he, and she goes, I didn't ask because I wasn't interested. And he goes, oh, well, you got to always ask because what if it was a million dollars? So, you know, doing the Austin Powers thing. Uh, and then he looks at her and he goes, well, you do it for a billion dollars. Of course you would. And I'm and he like didn't really let her answer because at that point it just it didn't become about her and her choices and what she believes in and why she wouldn't take a billion dollars to pose nude. It was about Jenk, you know, hearing his own voice and and being like, let me tell you why you are wrong, woman. Uh, And, you know. It's just like it's like him dictating the price of what this woman should take to pose nude instead of being like you know i respect your choice i i don't know if i would be able to do something like that if someone offered me a large sum of money to pose nude and she goes well you know i'm thinking about my career and he goes what career what what career dick she is working with you she obviously wants to be a producer she wants to like work on you know, TV shows or radio, whatever it is. She's obviously, like, this is what she's chosen to do. She's not trying to cash out. She wants to do something meaningful with her life. And this is something that brings her meaning. Why would you, why would you, why would you assume that she just wants to take the money and fucking bail out? Because you would? Look, Jenk Uger if you gave him a billion dollars would uh would go to the, to 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 the bahamas or something that's what he said in that video which is like okay fucking which billionaire wants to give this asshole a billion dollars so he'll just go away not to mention you guys got 24 million dollars from the clinton ca- campaign you got katzenberg money and you guys didn't go away you got this large sum of money and you didn't go away you continued to fucking shill for them yeah, that it, that doesn't mean anything. That just means you're somebody's fucking puppet. You're like a dancing monkey for them. You're a whore, is what you are. You're a shill for for large corporate interests. But your employee clearly has some sort of ethics, some sort of morality, some sort of firm stance in line. She, she has the willpower to say, I am not going to be bought out. I'm not going to sell out my fucking beliefs. I'm not going to sell out my own body to go lay on the beach for the rest of my... Fuck that. Most people can't do that. Most people dread retirement because they don't know what to do with themselves. Human beings like to have a sense of purpose. Jenk Uger might not because he's a vapid empty shell for whoever wants to jam cash in it and then he'll just parrot whatever the fuck they say they want him to say. This is the part that's a little personal about this. Um, a few years ago, I was I was at a party with some comedians, right? And we were drinking and having a good time and everything. And I ended up talking to this guy. He's a seasoned comic, a, a funny, funny gentleman. Uh, I got along with him pretty well. We weren't like best friends or anything, but you know, we'd see each other at mics, at shows every once in a while, and we'd be we'd chit chat and all that sort of stuff. Uh, nice enough guy, but uh, he came up to me and said, uh, "Chris, if, if if somebody offered you a large sum of money to go on Fox News and to and to crack some like basic liberal jokes, right? To kind of be uh, a, 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 and you'd be kind of the liberal voice." in a panel of conservatives, let's say they want to give you $10,000 for 10 minutes of work, would you take it? And I said, no, I wouldn't. It's it's not something that I am interested in, right? And he couldn't let it go. He couldn't fucking fathom it. He was like, 10000 what about 50000 What about a million? Like, the number kept going up. And I kept saying no. Because I'm not there to bring a point of view or a perspective. I am there to be a dancing monkey. I am there to fucking be a punching bag for them 
And that is not what I'm interested in in the least. I would I would rather be there to talk about what I believe in and and you know punch up instead of punch down on myself. I don't want to do that. Um, I have principles that I'm not willing to sell out. And he just couldn't let... I mean, every couple of minutes, he would come up and be like, oh, what about... You're telling me, really? Like, this much money? And it was just this thing that he couldn't wrap around his head. Very similar to Jenk. I had another friend. We were talking over some drinks. And uh, brought up Nancy Pelosi. Brought up Obama, Right. This guy's a good guy, uh, you know, kind of lines with the Democratic Party, um, not because they represent what he believes in, but because he feels like they're the good guys. You know what I mean? Like, y you understand his perspective. Um, you know, I said, well, look at someone like Obama, who, you know, caused the oh, wait, collapse of the housing markets, and then after he leaves the office of the president is going and giving $600,000 speeches to Goldman Sachs, you know, to Wells Fargo. You know, Nancy Pelosi doing the same thing. Hillary Clinton is taking a couple hundred thousand dollars to do these speeches for these banks. And, uh, and, then, they're, and then they're talking about, you know, how they're in solidarity with the working class. It's a betrayal. And he goes, yeah, but they probably did it for the money. I was like, I don't know, man. Like... Yes, they definitely did it for the money, but, like, that's also probably what they believe in. They believe in the banking industry. They believe in exploita exploitation via capitalism. And to him, he was like, well, wouldn't you take the money? I said, no. Nobody's going to pay me fucking 600 grand to go and basically yell at some fucking Goldman Sachs executives about how much of a ginormous f pieces of shit I think they are and why they're a cancer on society, why they're a plague that needs to go away and why we need to burn this system down and, and, and build something new from the ashes. No, and, ain't nobody paying me 600 grand to do that shit. And be like, well, they might let you do that. It's like, no, they're not. But even that is people can't fathom that you don't have a price to set out, sell out your beliefs. They might. And if they do, okay, I don't. And people can't fathom that. They can't wrap their heads around somebody that has a strong moral core that isn't willing to give up their beliefs, give up their, their, their ideologies for a large sum of money. All that tells me is you don't, people that are willing to do something like that, and this might sound harsh, but you know, the, the more I talk to, the more I talk to people like this, the more it's like, yeah, this is the only conclusion I can draw. People that have these values, these progressive values, but then go $600,000 is what it's going to take for me to lose all of those belief systems and believe whatever these people want me to believe. That means you don't really have a belief system. You have a bank account that needs to be filled. And I understand that part of that comes from being in poverty for so long, being impoverished for so long. And watching everybody else get all of these things, live carefree, live worry-free. And if something can come and change all of that for you, yeah, that's awesome. But if that something is going to ask you to change your entire perspective, abandon your friends, abandon your beliefs, abandon who you are, and become something else, something that you don't even get to choose, then what is the fucking point of it? They have beliefs, but they're not strong-held beliefs. They're flimsy, wishy-washy beliefs. So when someone does take a hard-line stance, when someone does come out and make justifications for socialism use, and, and uses history as a way to validate those justifications, these people go, well, if you give me X amount of dollars, I will forget all of that. So I don't need to, I don't need to be on your side anymore. Or I'm only on your side superficially. It kind of is, is what it sounds like. 
if Goldman Sachs paid either of these people $10,000 to never speak to me again, I believe that they would. And it sucks to think that, right? But it's also, that's what Jenk is. If you give Jenk a million dollars, he will pose nude. Take that money and go away from public light. He got $24 million. Immediately switch sides. These people don't have beliefs. They have bank accounts. These are not your heroes. You shouldn't be propping them up. Especially TYT. Yeah, when I was in college, I mean, I was watching The Young Turks and MSNBC thinking that it was, you know, truly progressive and lefty. I know better now. You, know, you grow up. You learn your lessons. Um, and that, and that's where we're at. You can still think TYT is good content. I don't think, I don't think they are. That's fine. But if you can't objectively, I mean, most of their content now is yelling about Jimmy Dore and Aaron Maté. They haven't done any sort of substantial journalism in years. In years. So... You're wondering why their numbers are plummeting. It has nothing to do with, oh, Aaron and Jimmy fucking... No, you collapsed yourself. That's what they did. They showed you who they really are repeatedly, and this was the final blow, where people go, okay, man, we've given you enough chances, and now you're, now you're just hitting yourself in the foot over and over again and trying to blame somebody that's not even in the room. So that's what I wanted to say about the TYT thing. Um, that I, I've got my live virtual comedy shows back in action and the very last Friday of every single month. They happen at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Tickets are $10, and every month it's a brand new show covering a brand new sociopolitical topic that you won't hear on corporate mainstream networks. And as a bonus, uh, some months you might get to hear a weird, quirky story from me related to the topic of discussion, or there might be a special guest joining the show. These are musicians, storytellers, comedians, activists, so on and so forth. Uh, they they will be uh, kicking off the show uh, with a with a set at the at the top, and then it'll lead right into the socio political commentary. Uh, and look, if ten bucks is a is a little bit too expensive, I totally understand. Shoot me a message or an email, and I will make sure that you get a ticket to come check out the show via Zoom. Uh, secondly, if you want to uh, financially contribute to the show and you are on stable financial ground, you can do so at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate that's k-r-i-s-h-m-o-h-a-n-h-a-h-a dot com slash donate the biggest way you can help is by becoming a sustaining member make monthly contributions uh which means that you get free tickets to the virtual comedy shows that i just talked about and the live ones when the live ones come back uh, you also get early access to a certain Forkful of Noodles videos. You get to ask me questions, which I'll then respond to either in live streams, uh, standalone videos, or as a segment on the virtual comedy shows that I do. And then those will be released as premium exclusive content just for the members. Uh, you get uh, addition, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content. So tons of things for becoming a uh, sustaining member. But if sustaining membership isn't in your cards, you can also make a one-time donation as well. And um, I have now included a statement of transparency, which lets you know exactly what you're contributing to um, and what you're helping me uh, uh, achieve, what goals you're helping me achieve by becoming a sustaining member, by, by, by getting me one step closer to making this my full-time job again. It, 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 be doing comedy full-time and creating content full-time was my full, uh, was my job full uh, pre-pandemic, but uh, because of the the way the world is now, um, I'm unable to do that without uh, without the do without donations from you guys, from the people. And lastly, I want to mention that I do have a online merch store. That's right, I've got uh, t-shirts, I've got mugs, hoodies, you name it, it's there, probably, kind of. Uh, but <laughs> it's available on my website, krishmohanhaha.com. Uh, it's the merch tab, 
and uh, there all of the designs have been made by me there's seven designs uh, on the site right now but that's due to probably go up I'll probably make newer designs and release them as as, as time goes on um, but there's a Julian Assange shirt that's available right now and I'm gonna donate all a hundred percent of all of the profits made from that shirt to pro Assange um, groups and journalists and activists uh, people like Action for Assange, right? Uh, Kevin Gasola, Richard Medhurst, folks like that. Uh, I'm going to make my donations to them. Um, so, so if you want to help, um, you know, people that are covering Assange, uh, hit the spotlight a little bit more. Then, then grab that shirt because I'm donating all of that to them. Uh, and last but not least, you can grab all of my stand-up comedy albums directly off of my Bandcamp at krishmohanhaha.bandcamp.com. My albums are available for a pay-what-you-want uh, price range on Bandcamp, but if you just want to listen to them and you don't want to, you know, have them take up room in your computer, I totally get it. Uh, you can also stream them off of Pandora. It's available on iTunes and uh, uh, you Google Play, all of, the, all of the ways that you listen to music. Uh, with all that said and done, uh, thank you guys for tuning into the show. Thank you guys for being regular listeners to the show. I very much appreciate it. And thank you to all the people that do donate regularly and have become sustaining members because uh, I wouldn't be able to continue doing this without you guys. So you guys really make this uh, possible. And I am very, very, very appreciative of that. 